Hi guys and welcome to A Dark Soul. Did you know that resource guarding in dogs is actually normal and not only in dogs, we do it too? Today we're going to talk about why a dog doesn't have to give up everything and how you can actually have fun with a dog that is resource guarding. I'm Anita, I'm a professional dog trainer. I show you how to build a trusting relationship with your dog to overcome fear and reactivity and have a good time together again. And if you haven't already, don't forget to like and subscribe. And now stay tuned and have fun. All right, so let's clarify resource guarding first. With resource guarding, I'm talking about the dog has anything that's important to him and whenever somebody else doesn't matter if it's a human a cat another dog anybody comes closer the dog will protect that resource so he may start growling or if it's something to eat eat faster take it to a secure location stiffen up or some dogs might even bite instantly when they feel the need to protect that resource. And this is a very scary behavior, of course, because we don't want to see any aggressive behavior towards us, right? Or towards another family member. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that we shouldn't work on it. Of course we should. But resource guarding as a behavior is normal in every living breathing thinking creature right so it's also normal for us if we buy something we really like and we get the feeling that somebody is trying to steal that from us we get very tense right or if we are at a restaurant and we're eating and the waiter would come and just take the plate away while we are eating we would definitely show some kind of reaction <laughs> and with dogs it's exactly the same and in my opinion we should give them as much so we should really acknowledge that this is a normal behavior. Dogs are not robots. And of course, if something is important to them, they will guard it. And if we don't want that, if we want our dogs to feel really comfortable with us in their close proximity, even if they have something that's important to them, we have to show them that we are actually no threat to them. And that starts with, we are not taking anything from them by force, of course. But this may sound logical. And then if you're outside with your dog on a walk and he just vacuums up everything he can find, you may find yourself in a very different position and your hand already moving towards your dog's mouth and if we want our dogs to trust us we have to really give them a reason to trust us and this can be very hard for us i'm not saying that your dog should just be allowed to eat everything he can find outside and if he does that and a lot of street dogs do that in my area then the first step would be to prevent it either with a different route where there is not much to find or with a muzzle and then really start training but just taking stuff out of your dog's mouth is really really uncomfortable for the dog and it can lead to resource guarding, it doesn't have to. If your dog is resource guarding at home, when you give him something to chew or his regular food or a nice treat, a kong, whatever, 
um, it can be anything. It can be also a water bowl or a spot or toys or outside. It can be a sniff spot. It can be another dog. It can be you. Dogs could guard anything, anything that's important to them. And if you see it at home and your dog is guarding something, in the past, there has been the recommendation to just desensitize your dog in a way that you're constantly going towards your dog, constantly trying to um, touch whatever he has and just bother him over and over and over until he gives up. This is a very, very dangerous way to go at that because if the thing is really important to the dog and you're not intimidating enough, the dog will just escalate and this is very dangerous. So the more safe and the more fun way to do it is to just keep your distance at whatever distance your dog's comfortable with and start adding stuff to whatever your dog's guarding. So your dog learns that whenever you are approaching, it's not uncomfortable and he gets stuff in addition to what he already has. And if that way of training is built up in very, very, very small steps, the dog will never have the need to guard whatever he has from you. So we start with a very relaxed dog and we take that relaxed feeling into our training and into our daily life, even with resources. And for my own dog, it was a bunch of stuff. Sammy really guarded a lot. He guarded um, his sleeping space, chew toys, regular toys, anything that is a special treat, not his regular food, but every special treat he could find, he would also guard other dogs. So we really had a lot to do and he did that with humans, with cats, with other dogs. So whenever it comes to uncontrollable animals like cats, it's a lot more difficult. So yes, we can train the cat as well, but since very often cats come and go as they please, which is wonderful for the cat, it can startle the dog and it can make training unpredictable. And that's where management comes in. So whenever the dog has something special in his relaxation zone, we have to keep an eye out for any other animals that could enter that area and prevent that. Of course, the same thing goes for visitors. So visitors should never be able to approach a dog when he has something he would guard. That would be very dangerous. And especially with dogs that look very cute or are really, really nice dogs in every other area of their lives, people tend to not take warnings seriously. That's why I would really look at management and just prevention so that I don't have to rely on people listening to me. Of course, that all always depends on the people and how serious they take these things and stuff like that. So you are the best judge of your dog, your visitors, your other pets, and of course, your actions. So always trust your gut feeling. And if you have a weird feeling, use more management, more prevention, and just go on the safe side. That said, if I can help you with something like this, 
go to the description, book a free call. We see how I can help, what we can do together and how we can achieve as much as possible. That said, don't forget to like and subscribe and I wish you an amazing time with your dog training or just having a good time. Until next time, bye. Thank you.